Hall, I'm Jim Kramer, standing here next to Bigfoot number six. A Bigfoot number six is primarily used in indoor stadiums for car crushing and sled pulling. Now, to be able to withstand these rigors, we had to redesign this truck uh, and upgrade it from, say, Bigfoot number four. And in order to do that, what we did is build in a lot more strength and change the componentry. Let me show you this truck. Bigfoot six uses a 472 cubic inch supercharged Ford engine. Use a 671 BDS blower with two Predator racing carburetors on top. This gives us about 650 horsepower. It uses a ladder type frame, tempered leaf springs with a timber and rubber spring as a helper in this area and also back on the axle support system. This axle strut helps take the force of hitting cars at 30 miles an hour. We also use nitrogen charged gas shocks. This is very important for when you come down after you do hit those cars. You don't want any aeration in the shock itself and the nitrogen charge keeps the aeration out. All the suspension components have to control this axle. This axle is what we call a combination axle using a five ton center section with an agricultural tractor type tip. It takes a lot of work in engineering and incorporating but that's the kind of axle it takes to be able to control the weight and the horsepower these monster trucks have. Hey, I'm Gary Porter from Waysboro, North Carolina, the owner and driver of Carolina Crusher. This is the all-new 89 Chevrolet. It was built in December of 88, and I started racing in January of 89. It has a blown 468 cubic inch Chevrolet motor in it, putting out approximately 925 horsepower. It runs the Allison AT5 44-speed automatic. The truck weighs approximately 2,000 pounds lighter than the other truck. It weighs 13,500 pounds. The paint on it is a 78 Corvette yellow, painted by Terry Conklin out of Wadesboro, North Carolina. And the graphics are from, by Jim Norris out of Wallace, South Carolina. The truck is sponsored by Porter's Four-Wheel Drive Center, which my brother owns, and Big A Auto Parts. Special thanks to Yates Tyson.
I'm Dennis Anderson with the Grave Digger. I'm the owner and driver. This is the second of the Grave Digger trucks. I've got two of them. This, this truck here is a Chevrolet body. I used to run a Ford body, but it's a 1950 Chevrolet panel truck. Another interesting feature on my truck is I, I run the motor in the rear. I run the motor in the rear to keep the front end up as much as possible and keep the, all the pressure off the front of it. I'm running a 2,000 horsepower 557 Rodak with a set of Backman aluminum heads on it. I run a turbo 400 transmission. I run a uh, Profab gearbox in it. We've got quick change gears for the truck, so we gear for short courses, we gear up for long courses. I run these uh, 6650 steel uh, flotation tires on it. They're a little bit wider than everybody else's. I've got one of the wildest paint jobs on the circuit. It's a graveyard scene. It's got tombstones in the background of it with a wrought iron fence that follows it all the way around. I've got reserved tombstones on the side of the truck for all my buddies that I race with. I've got USA One, Grave Digger, Bigfoot, and Stomper Bully on them. I came up with the name Grave Digger by running in the mud. And I used to dig graves for my buddies in the mud bog, so we just ran the Grave Digger off as a monster truck. Now I'm digging graves for all my competitors out there now. <laughs> Hi, I'm Dan Patrick. I'm the owner and the driver of the Samson Monster Truck. It's a 1989 Chevrolet Silverado. It is powered by a 454 cubic inch Chevrolet engine. The truck weighs 13,800 pounds, and that is with the tires, and the tires weigh 950 pounds.
I'm Bob Chandler, Chief Executive Officer of MTRA, the uh, Monster Truck Racing Association, the only organization that is dedicated to the safety of monster trucks and monster truck racing. What I'd like to talk to you today about is, is the safety equipment required by MTRA on these monster trucks. Uh, we start out requiring shields on the engine, on the transmission, uh, on the drive shafts, on the drive shaft U-joints, on the bell housings, on the clutch, on the torque converters, on anything that could possibly explode and hurt the driver or the crowd. We also require these trucks with superchargers to have aluminum studs, uh, blower restraints, guards for the, for the pulleys. We also require uh, kill switches in the cab so the driver can stop the truck with just one easy movement of his arm and a secondary kill switch also on the back of the trucks. So if the truck were ever to roll, anybody could run up to this truck and pull this pin and it would stop all, of, all the electrical, the fuel pumps, uh, it would really protect the driver. There's quite a few of these rules designed specifically for the driver himself, starting with a approved helmet, a neck collar to protect him from whiplash, a kidney belt, a whole fire suit the driver must wear. Uh, he's got to have a seat belt on, a shoulder harness. He's got to have a fire extinguisher with easy reach of himself. Uh, and he also has to have a six-point roll cage to protect him in case of a rollover. Probably half the cost of these monster trucks is safety equipment required by MTRA. So when you see that MTRA decal on the vehicle or the MTRA license plate, give that driver an extra round of applause. You know he has spent a lot of time and money to protect you as a spectator and himself as a driver. Hi, my name is Marvin Smith. I'm from Arnold, Missouri. I'm the driver of Stomper 2 behind me. This truck has been on the circuit for approximately five years now. I've driven it for, for five years. Uh, it, it was originally called a Crimson Giant until I changed the name over to Stomper. Uh, this truck is powered by 468 cubic inch big block Chevrolet blown with an 871 blower and two Predator carburetors. This truck here, since it's been the Stomper truck, it hasn't rolled yet, knock on wood. But the other Stomper truck, Stomper 1, about a year and a half ago, driven by Mike Witt, was rolled over in Charlotte, North Carolina in a competition and also again in Louisville, Kentucky back in the summer races against Bigfoot in the semifinals. Thank goodness nobody's been hurt in any of these trucks yet. They're all very, very safe. They're equipped with roll bars and uh, every safety, safety uh, factor that we can put into them. Hi, my name is Rod Litzoff, a driver of USA One. USA One is based out of Minneapolis, Minnesota. USA One is powered by a big block Chevrolet 572 running three Predator carbs with an 871 blower. One unique thing with this truck is it has a stock frame that we totally went beefed it up, boxed it. All other trucks are running the tubular square frames and we kept with this one the original. We're trying to keep everything. The interior is original. The body's original. Everything is original on this truck.
my wildest dreams that I ever imagined that working on my pickup in my garage at home could lead to this. It's like anything else in life, once you start, it's pretty hard to stop. Uh, what you see here is a result of 14 years of hard work by a lot of people. About 1978, when I first hit the road with Bigfoot, there wasn't any other big trucks on the road, so Bigfoot made quite an impression. Most people didn't know what to think about it, but they knew they liked it. I'm Don Breitweiser, driver of Bigfoot 2. Let's take a look at earlier years of Bigfoot in action.
those were exciting times, trying out new ideas for bigger and better trucks. There were only a few of us back then. Nowadays, there's hundreds of trucks and drivers all out trying to make a name for themselves by setting new records, trying new stunts. The competition is getting pretty fierce. We've had to build all these trucks just to keep up with the different monster truck events. So with so many Bigfoot trucks, 10 right now, it gets hectic around here. And I need some time to get away and relax.
I'm Ken Kelling, driver of Bigfoot One. Bigfoot One has the largest engine of all Bigfoot trucks. We use this truck for mud running and hill climbing. Back in 1987, at Gravelama, I topped the hill to join Bob Chandler in the Over the Hill Gang. Let's take a look. I'm Jim Kramer, Senior Vice President of Bigfoot 4x4 and driver of Bigfoot 7. Even with the excitement of hill climbing and 
and mud bogging, I think we're just starting to see the tip of the iceberg when it comes to monster truck racing. And there's a whole new generation of truck and driver out there in the courses these days. Things are really shaping up for the battles of the future. With more consistent courses, lighter and faster vehicles, and newer and better techniques for getting the best out of a monster truck and taking that to the finish line. Monster trucks and monster truck racing, a good thing that's only going to get better and faster. With all the new events and drivers and trucks on the circuit today, you can bet Bigfoot and the entire crew will be dishing out excitement and plenty of monster truck action for years to come. So keep an eye out. Who knows what will be coming down the road next?